on this video we deal with the different forms of non-verbal communication codified by experts we explore the grammar of non-verbal communication to understand how best we can use them in different situations and cultural contexts in the course of the evolution of mankind non-verbal communication preceded all other forms of communication in fact it's as important to mankind as verbal communication connecting with people through effective communication is one of the vital skills we need to possess in today's world while the word communication takes its origin from the latin communico or communicare which means to share communication is much more than the sharing of ideas feelings and information with others being able to articulate effectively involves skills at multifarious levels listening speaking reading and writing all of these skills use words for communication this kind of communication that uses words is called verbal communication however not all communication takes place through words when a message is transmitted without the involvement of words or speech or in other words when a message is transmitted through non-verbal cues it's called non-verbal communication non-verbal communication involves aspects like kinesics paralinguistic features proxemics and haptics kinesics in communication refers to the transmission of messages through body language or through body movements and body signs the word kinesics originates from the greek kinesis which means movement kinesics in communication involves visible elements like gestures eye contact facial expressions posture and personal appearance which have to be used appropriately in communication as each body movement conveys a specific meaning purposeful hand gestures speak louder than words in fact they are a fundamental part of language gestures are culture specific but there are many universally accepted ones too for instance handshake is a greeting ritual in many cultures while using gestures we have to be careful about how to make them elegant appealing and socially acceptable posture refers to the way we carry ourselves it offers information about the attitudes and emotions of a person moreover it can be used to convey your readiness for communication and your interest in listening to someone especially in formal and professional situations like posture facial expressions reveal your attitudes and emotions a clear understanding of facial expression helps to set the tone and mood of the entire communication process a cheerful face complements the message conveyed verbally while a gloomy expression can contradict the message eye contact is the next aspect in kinesics each glance has its own meaning 
The first step in opening communication is to express a willingness to connect with the speaker, the listener or the audience through your eyes. In a professional situation, especially while addressing a gathering, try to keep looking in all directions. Alongside the above mentioned factors, personal appearance matters in the professional world. Being well groomed is as important as your posture. Paralinguistic features refer to the vocal qualities that form the nonverbal parts of a message. The most important paralinguistic features include pitch, volume, pace and pause. The study of these features is called vocalics. Why paralanguage is important is because each voice has its own unique and distinct quality or timbre which determines whether the voice is pleasing or not. Pitch refers to the frequent rises and falls in human speech. This vocal aspect adds meaning and intensity to our message. Moreover, bringing in pitch variations makes our speech attractive and interesting. Like pitch, Volume also conveys the intensity of a message when used appropriately. Volume has to be regulated effectively in communication based on the distance between people, the kind of relationship we have with someone and the other factors that form the backdrop to communication. Like volume and pitch, Pace is another factor which determines the effectiveness of communication. An extremely fast-paced speech can be unintelligible to others while a very slow-paced speech may create boredom in the audience. Studies suggest that an average rate of 150 words per minute is ideal in formal and professional communication. The next aspect is pause. Pauses make our speech comprehensible to the audience and indicate how composed and confident we are as speakers. The word proxemix originates from the Latin proximus which means near. Proxemix refers to the use of space and conversational distance in communication. In other words, it's about the distances people maintain between each other in social interactions. Space varies with cultures and occasions and with factors like relationships, gender, etc. The American anthropologist Edward T. Hall defines four zones which are intimate zone, personal zone, social zone and public zone. Intimate zone involves direct contact and is reserved for family, parents, partners, close acquaintances, relatives and friends. Personal zone refers to the personal distance usually ranging from 1 to 4 feet that we maintain with others during friendly get-togethers, social functions and parties. Social zone refers to the distance of 4 to 12 feet that people maintain in formal business and professional gatherings. The communication that occurs in this zone is professional and sometimes casual. 
we maintain this distance while interacting with occasional visitors and strangers as well. Public zone refers to the public distance ranging from 12 to 25 feet or more that people maintain in professional situations. The distance between the speaker and the audience for instance. This zone is also used for formal communication. The word haptics originates from the Greek haptikos which means able to come into contact with or pertaining to the sense of touch. Haptics refers to the role of touch in communication. Haptic communication like proxemics varies with cultures and occasions. Though touch is a natural part of social interaction as in a handshake, it's important to understand the dynamics of touch as each touch communicates a specific message. Hence, we need to distinguish between socially sanctioned touch and touch that involves freedom and intimacy and touch that involves restrictions. To avoid unceremonious situations, it's better to follow certain common codes of professional behavior in haptic communication. The digital age has added a new dimension to nonverbal communication by the invention of emoticons or emojis. They are graphic representations of human emotions. In other words, they are icons depicting emotions. Today, we have pictorial representations for our visual, auditory, tactile, olfactory and gustatory sensations and are being used extensively in digital communication.